Hi everyone, uh, I've been exploring stable diffusion image to image workflows and um, I have some uh, exciting demos to show to you. So um, in this file, what I've tried to do is uh, develop uh, two scripts uh, that can generate a parametric model and we can supply this parametric model with uh, some keywords um, to our stable diffusion engine and get some uh, generated images. So uh, I'm going to show you how you can actually uh, generate your own custom scripts and uh, work with a similar workflow. So um, I'm actually going to, um, uh, we, we can actually look at what I'm doing here, but I'm going to do it from scratch so that you can actually uh, get to learn some uh, native grasshopper codes as well. So I'm going to move these aside and we're going to start with um, a grid uh, so that we can actually um, look at um, any type of um, parametric input uh, for um, uh, for the image to image translation. Um, so for this exercise, I'm going to start with um, this square grid here. And this actually takes in a base plane a size of grid cells and the amount of cells in X and Y directions. So I'm going to um, give some numbers here. So we're going to start with five by five and let's say we have 20 for the grid size. Now, uh, what I want to do first is to generate um, a, a city layout. So it could be, um, it could be kind of um, extruded forms that we can, uh, we can use as a, as a procedural, uh, procedural model for the stable diffusion input. So um, I have the cells here. What I'm going to do is um, push them to a curve container. So I'm going to flatten this list. And depending on your input grid size, you will get a number of uh, outlines. So let's say we have 25 uh, polylines for this case. I'm going to have uh, an offset so that we create some streets. Now by default, this would actually offset it um, outward but we want to create a negative offset so you can uh, right click here specify an expression and type in negative x so this will create um, kind of an offset from the boundaries of these plots and i'm going to define them as um, boundary surfaces so what we want to do is um, actually divide them into surface regions so um, I have um, my base surfaces here. So I'm, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use isotrim. And what isotrim does is it um, actually divides a surface into equal portions. But uh, for this, you need to supply um, a division domain. Um, so we can use um, divide domain squared, which actually gives us a grid uh, using the um, surface parameters. So uh, we can actually start with um, a three by three, or you can have any, any other type of uh, resolution. And here you can see I have three by three uh, grids uh, populated on these uh, plots. And um, the next step is to look at the amount of surfaces we have. So we have 225 surfaces. So uh, what we could do is uh, push them into a single um, surface container and flatten this list so we can operate on all of them simultaneously and I'm going to extrude them in the Z direction uh, but here use a randomizer so I'm going to use this random um, container um, that um, basically will help me generate um, random values for the extrusions uh, so each surface patch would be extruded in the Z direction so um, we want to get the number of uh, surfaces that we want to extrude. So that will be 225. And um, the domain of um, numeric range, we can actually construct a custom domain here. So this is, will be our extrusion interval. So let's say we want um, the smallest value to be five, the maximum value to be 20. And um, when I supply this, uh, this will generate random values for the extrusion. And I'm going to supply them to the unit C vector, 
and feed this into the direction. And this will generate um, kind of a, a random distribution of uh, volumes. And you can use this as a, as a procedural model um, for stable diffusion. Um, so we have a lot of control here. We can also decrease the number of um, grid sizes. So now I can do the two by threes and play around with the uh, street offset values. So it's a fully parametric model that we can actually um, have some control. Um, but inputting this into stable diffusion would require us to um, visualize some geometry. So um, for that, what I need to do is um, I have these curves as um, boundaries. So let's add the plot lines for the city. And I'm going to add some colors to these. So I'm going to use custom preview for this case, feed in these surfaces and add some color swatches. Um, you can play around with these colors. Um, you can make them in any color you want, uh, but you, you want to be able to input some contrasting values uh, for the colors so that um, stable diffusion can actually read them. And I'm going to give um, green for the uh, urban out. And the other thing I want to do is I want to supply some wireframe of the volumes and the wireframes. I want to make them. Um, let's actually make them black and I want these plots to be red. So we want to create create some sort of contrasting colors. And I'm going to choose everything here up until this preview and um, disable the custom preview. And um, we can actually play around with um, these numeric values to control the behavior. And since we are playing with the random, we can also supply a custom seat so that we can um, vary the, um, the iterations and get a result that we like. Um, the last step is basically to look at this at a viewport. So let's say we are looking at it from this angle here. And um, you want to be able to uh, choose a file path. So um, for this, I've created um, a workflow where I can input this as an image. So when I press this, it uh, basically captures my viewport as an input image. And then I supply um, some keywords here. So we can say um, architectural model of, um, of an urban city. And in the negative prompt, you can include anything you don't want. Um, for this, I'm just going to replace white and red. And let's see what we get. So when I press this button, um, it's going to trigger my response. Um, my, I mean, it's going to send my request to a remote server and it will give me a result. Uh, and here you can see it's, um, it's, it's a very actually um, close model, but it's getting a lot of the green of the buildings. Um, so we can actually reduce um, the number of green and maybe um, with gardens and trees here so that um, we can actually maybe this will trigger it not to use green for the whole buildings, but it will um, it will keep the model aesthetic. And let's see what we get. So it takes some time, but you can see it's um, kind of giving us a nice collage of distribution. And um, it's not reading the depth values of these uh, blocks here, but uh, it's kind of doing a nice job. Um, so here's the cool aspect of working with images like this. So if you change, let's say the view angle, so I'm going to look at it from top view now and generate a new image like this. Um, we can actually zoom in a bit more. Um, and I'm going to write in now aerial view of an urban uh, city with gardens and trees. And let's see what we get this time. So this area is actually um, shining a bit. So maybe we change the um, display property. 
or we can change the sun angle, but um, you can see it's actually uh, now trying to generate an image that is kind of an aerial view. Um, but this doesn't have to be um, a city. I mean, it could be anything we want it to be. So this could be, um, let's say, a concrete um, art wall with relief pattern. Let's see um, if this would generate any kind of interesting uh, result. So I'm using a parametrically generated uh, volumetric model as an input and using that to get some results. So these would be um, supplied by the stable diffusion. Um, so you can go back and forth. You can change these parameters. Um, you can change um, the random randomizer for these extrusions, but um, you can see it's kind of uh, doing a one-to-one -one correlation or translation of my input, but it's also overriding some uh, some areas. So we don't have full control, but we have some control over the image. Now, um, this was um, basically um, a city model that I wanted to make, but uh, the next uh, phase is uh, actually placing or customizing a portion of this. So what I want to do is place um, parametric form inside of this context and actually work with that. So um, for that exercise, I'm actually going to work on a tower form. And let's actually um, develop a new script now. So I'm going to start with a range. And um, let's say the, uh, the domain of my range is up to 80 and I want 20 uh, values. So we get um, the, this division um, of numbers. And then I want to supply this as the Z value for my tower. Um, place some planes in those uh, at those points. And this time I want to place a rectangle at these planes. And we can um, basically construct a domain here. The rectangle works with an interval. And let's say we want offsets of five by five in both directions. Um, so the way rectangle works is it takes in a plane and it offsets um, numeric values on both sides. So I'll just show you um, one example here. So we will look at the first one. So this rectangle is going from negative one to positive one in the X direction. You can see in the red axis, it's offsetting by one and in the y-axis is offsetting by two. And uh, for my domain, I want to specify an expression of negative x here so that we can um, create a rectangle five by five. And this will be, um, this will be parametrically controlled. And I'm supplying it to all the planes now. And you can see we get um, rectangle shapes and the next um, next step is basically to give some rotation uh, for these planes. So I'm going to create a graph mapper and create another range, disconnect uh, the domain. So it goes from zero to one, supply this to my graph mapper and get a linear distribution. Now, this is going to create a twisting shape uh, when I multiply the results um, with an angle. So let's say we want to create a twist, um, twisting shape of profiles. So what I do is I multiply this one by 180 degrees, turn it into uh, radians, and rotate uh, planes. Um, so I'm going to push this a bit further up, use these planes and rotate them, and now place the rotated planes to my rectangle and you can see the shape is actually taking some sort of twist and I can control how much twist I want here. And this would also control the distribution of rotation per plane and you can play around with these. Um, so I'm going to um, loft this shape and um, now we have a parametric uh, volume or form that we can actually place or use. Uh, inside uh, the city. Um, so there are a lot of ways we can actually enhance this model, but let me actually place this inside um, this grid 
and we will be able to um, then look at some images. So I'm going to turn on the, uh, the city and I want to place this uh, somewhere in the middle and to replace the surface here. Um, so there are a bunch of ways we could do it. Um, one way is to be able to uh, get rid of um, this, uh, this curve here in the index. Um, so what you can do is you can use this patch to do that. And um, the index of the middle here would be, um, I mean, if it starts from zero to um, zero to, and goes in this direction, you would have uh, four, nine, uh, 10, 11, and 12. So the index will be at 12. And you can create a series of uh, points to actually visualize it. So I'm going to um, get the list linked. Um, and look at uh, these points so you can visualize the list here and type in point list so I'm going to disable this portion and show you how you can find the indices of these uh, grid points so let's also disable this um, the values are a bit large but you can see we are trying to place this tower at the 12th index so I need to take this off uh, from the list. Um, so I have the values here and what I'm looking for is the 12th index. So I'm looking for some equality and this will give me uh, true or false values that you can use for filtering out some data. So uh, if you're looking for not equality, we can use this as a filtering mechanism. And if I filter these curves, um, you'll get 24 here and the middle curve here. So you can actually visualize um, if I use 12 here, I'll be able to place it or take it out of the list. And you can use this um, as a filtering mechanism. So I'm going to place it at the 12th index. So the rest of the curves, they, they can actually go through the same process. So I'm going to um, supply them uh, supply them here. So I'm going to enable this. So you can see that region is actually taken out uh, from the procedural extrusions. Um, and the remaining thing is actually to be able to place this tower inside of there. Um, so for that, you can do um, a few things. You can either um, use uh, this point, uh, this area centroid um, uh, of this uh, of this plot to uh, place the tower or you can um, move your parametric form from the origin to that location either of them would work fine um, I'm actually going to get the um, the centroid where I want to locate the tower and I want to move this object um, to this um, to the centroid side, we can we should be able to use it as a um, as a vector directly, and you can see it kind of moved it here. And what I need to do is just hide everything else, and now I have um, basically a form uh, where I want the tower to be. Now uh, we can actually play around with um, a lot of things, so I can um, reduce the height here and maybe give some other colors uh, to the tower. So let's make it um, some other color. I'm going to hide this as well. Um, the height is a bit too much, so let me actually reduce it to 60. And the next thing is to be able to look at it and capture it as an image. So now it's giving me kind of an urban context and I'm going to write a parametric tower within an urban context. Let's see if this would work. So there we go. Um, we actually got uh, a nice result here. So it's reading kind of the curvature of this tower. Uh, it's kind of hard to actually, um, I, I guess it's not reading this transition here, this edge. 
Uh, one thing we could do is also um, enable some wireframe for this form. So you can um, make it differentiated a bit more. And um, maybe we also reduce the twist a bit so that we can, or increase it a bit, maybe change the angle and repeat the whole process. So you can actually work with um, these sorts of parametric tools and generate stylistic images using stable diffusion. Um, so all of your model could be parametrically driven and you can see it's, uh, you're, you're actually leaving a lot, um, a lot of stuff for stable diffusion to interpret. Um, so uh, we are only feeding in this, um, this volume. Uh, but it also gives us a lot of opportunities to explore. So I can reduce the number of rotation. Um, let's actually, uh, what else can we do? We can actually increase the heights here. Maybe decrease it and then play around with the seat, change the configuration of the urban layout and repeat the whole process so that the input will be changed and we will get a different output. And you can also play with uh, the prompts. So um, this was a parametric tower input and you can see it's generating a lot of different results, um, but we can also write um, like a custom um, parametric tower building by Zahadit Architects. You can also stylize it with nighttime images, um, aerial images, or um, any other um, type of um, architectural style. Uh, let's try this again. So there we go. Um, it basically helps us, um, enables us to be able to control the inputs, the image generation um, parametrically. So you can uh, combine multiple models like this. You can generate a context model that is a procedurally driven a parametric form that is also controlled by uh, values. I, I just made a simple massing in this case and um, I'm rendering them using um, different colors. So if I made this into the same color here, it would actually get a similar treatment by stable diffusion. Uh, it's because it uses this, uh, these values of the input image uh, to drive um, how you want to generate the output. And I'm just going to generate one more iteration. And there we go. So it's uh, it's basically placing um, kind of a nice interpretation of a city and the tower, and the rest is um, basically sky. Um, and I kind of left it a bit open-ended so it can have much freedom for the uh, image generation. And um, so it's it's basically now we can we can have a parametric workflow that integrates stable diffusion inside Grasshopper as well. Um, I hope you like this tutorial. Um, so um, if you are uh, interested in learning stable diffusion, there are a lot of resources on this channel. So um, I hope um, uh, you, you get to subscribe and follow uh, this content. And um, I will see you in another video. Uh, until then, take care.